I'm loving it. Welcome back to a, another session of Domains 21. Uh, I'm Jim Groom and I have, I'm going back into the well, the CUNY well, as they say. And I have a group of folks from the City University of New York Graduate Center here to talk about OER as infrastructure. We've talked with a few groups uh, from CUNY. So it's been compelling part of this conference, at least for us on Domains 21. So welcome all. I'll let you introduce yourself and I will remove myself from the stream. Hi everyone, I'm Matt Gold. I'm uh, Associate Professor of English and Digital Humanities at the CUNY Grad Center and Director of the CUNY Academic Commons and co-PI of the Manifold Scholarship Project. Hi everyone, I'm Luke Walter. I'm Director of the Teaching and Learning Center at the Graduate Center and I teach in the Interactive Technology and Pedagogy Certificate Program and the MA Program in Digital Humanities and work with Matt on the CUNY Academic Commons as Director of Community Projects. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Lori Herson. I'm an open educational technologist um, in the Teaching and Learning Center. Hi everyone, I'm Robin Miller. I'm an open educational technologist in the GC Digital Initiatives. So uh, thanks so much, Jim, for having us on, uh, on the air here. Um, you know, we're really excited to talk about OER at CUNY. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, the City University of New York um, is uh, an incredibly large urban public uh, university located in New York City. It has 25 campuses. Um, it has an incredibly uh, diverse uh, student body. Um, and uh, it has been supported in its creation of OER in recent years by the state of New York, uh, which has contributed funding uh, that has allowed the Office of Library Services at CUNY, led by Ann Fiddler and Andy McGinney, uh, McGinney to, uh, to foster a set of initiatives across the system uh, that have really enabled us to promote not just open education, uh, but open platforms. And I think one of the things that uh, this group, uh, Luke and Lori, Robin and I, and also our colleague, Wendy Borales, who, who unfortunately couldn't make the session today, have been working on is thinking about um, OER infrastructure and the particular role that CUNY can play in creating open platforms uh, for teaching and learning and the publishing of scholarship. Um, and we've done that with the CUNY Academic Commons, which is going on uh, 10 years of existence, um, has almost 30,000 members, um, and Manifold, which is a newer uh, digital publishing project, um, and which we're, is being used across CUNY to publish a range of open educational resources. Um, I've been really lucky to uh, collaborate with Lori and Robin and Luke on this project, um, which has really uh, enabled us to support open education across the entire system. So I can say a bit um, about our, our strategy um, in establishing um, this the structure for supporting open infrastructure throughout CUNY. Um, when investments came in from uh, New York State into CUNY and SUNY starting uh, about three years ago uh, to, to facilitate the development of open educational resources, they, I think smartly, prioritized the transition of high cost textbook courses, textbook driven courses um, into zero textbook cost courses. They're really attempting to save uh, undergraduate students money um, on the books that they would have to, to read to participate in their, their coursework. Um, we, at that point, um, didn't know uh, how long these investments would, would last within CUNY. Um, and because of how the Graduate Center is positioned um, on a consortial model where our faculty come from uh, all of the CUNY campuses and our students teach at the majority of the CUNY campuses. Um, we are uh, very much connected uh, and, a, and a connecting node for the entire university. We had the privilege and the opportunity to think about infrastructure at the level of the system um, and what would be necessary um, to sustain the investments that were coming in um, from New York State over time, right? And not necessarily to be drawn into a semester by semester um, representation of the impact that we're having, um, but really to build something that we think um, could foster um, more critical uh, approaches to uh, teaching and learning with technology that are at the heart of the open movement. Um, and uh, we were able to build upon platforms, Manifold and the Commons, that were already in existence 
um, and really deepen their embeddedness within uh, the infrastructure that people use for teaching, learning, and scholarship throughout the university. Um, so uh, to do this, we were able to, to bring on uh, open educational technologists to support these projects full time. Um, Lori Herson joined us um, in uh, 2017 in this role. Uh, and Krisha Michael, uh, who's now a professor at Hostos Community College, joined us. And when Krisha left, uh, Robin joined us. Um, so we've been able to work on a variety of initiatives um, to support faculty and graduate students who are building out their work um, on these platforms. And then to take what we learn from supporting them back into the development of those platforms, right? They're open source platforms we oversee. Um, their development, and there's lots to learn from how they're used um, within the field. Um, so maybe, Laura, you can tell us a little bit um, about uh, what that looks like on the Commons and how it's evolved over the past few years. Sure. So I'm going to share my screen and walk you through a couple uh, pages on the Commons can, that can kind of show um, the development of how the Commons has increasingly supported open teaching over time. Okay, so the CUNY Academic Commons was primarily um, used, uh, developed to, to support teaching and collaboration across CUNY. Um, but in the spring of 2017, um, wrong one, Ooh, a lot of tabs here. In the spring of 2017, we hosted a faculty fellows program to explore um, different ways that the Commons might support undergraduate teaching. And from that, over time, um, the Commons releases uh, new versions and new updates uh, twice a year in the spring um, and in the fall. And so in after hosting several uh, faculty fellowship programs spring of 2017, we also hope hosted uh, OER faculty fellowship program in the spring of 2018. And from that came um, several, you know, uh, developments on the commons that we uh, increase the platform to better support teaching and learning. So um, we redeveloped the sort of uh, creation portal, which uh, walked commons users through how to develop a group or a site on the commons. And this better supported teaching because previously um, folks were not hosting undergraduate courses on the commons. But once we kind of clarified how you start creating on the commons, you can have a group, you can have a site, you can have a connected group site. And these are the sorts of things that help us host courses. And so once folks were hosting courses on the commons, we developed um, the courses directory, which is a, a big move for the commons because it really showcases and surfaces all of the courses that are running on the commons. Um, and when you look through the courses directory, you can search by campus and semester and disciplinary cluster. And that, that has developed over time. At first, the courses directory was sort of just a listing of courses. And now we're able to better filter, helping faculty and students find their courses on the commons. Um, and you can kind of scroll through and see that um, over time, the commons has now hosted over um, 1,200 courses across CUNY um, in all sorts of disciplinary clusters, humanities, the sciences, um, social sciences, and they, they're all filterable through here. Um, and with the development of, of like OER use throughout the Commons, we also were trying to support um, courses that are primarily using open educational resources to, to, to run the class. Um, and so we, I'm just going to show you a course right now that was developed out of Brooklyn College as part of their OER fellowship program, um, this language loss, culture, politics, and the self. And so on these, on these sites, uh, if it's a completely open site, um, anyone can go see the sorts of open educational resources that are being used, the sort of units and the way that the site has been developed. And you can click into all of these places and see, see the, the content that's being shared there. And there's also a lot of student work happening on the Commons. Um, I want to just jump over to another completely public course, um, which was a uh, linguistic landscapes course that was run at LaGuardia Community College, where students actually did an oral history of a neighborhood. So they developed um, they you know, explored neighborhoods across New York City. This was pre-pandemic, um, but it was a completely open course where they produced audio and oral histories. They produced GIFs and all of this work was shared publicly through this common site. So this is kind of an example. We have this language loss course, which is using open materials, which is one way to do open on the commons to doing completely open and public projects on the, on the site. And so courses can um, be, 
you know, there's various uh, privacy settings. So a course could have a private site. So you might be running an open course on this open platform, but you only want it um, available to your students. And then you can go, you, you can even have a public site. So there's different levels of privacy that you can have on the commons as well. Um, yeah, so there's courses running on the Commons, but I also want to point out a couple other things where the Commons is not just hosting courses, it's also actually hosting open educational resources themselves. So one project that we did at the TLC, uh, where I work with Luke, is we are releasing all of our workshop content openly. We've categorized them and each, and each of these um, workshops is um, available here, and then they can be used by anyone across CUNY, anyone doing any sort of faculty development in higher ed, and you can click in and see these workshops. And this is happening throughout CUNY. Um, this is another example of an OER uh, kind of resource that's hosted on the Commons where um, folks from LaGuardia are collecting natural science OERs and sharing them um, with folks at LaGuardia, but also across, across CUNY for anyone who might be trying to teach an open science course. Um, so in that way, the Commons is kind of hosting both open courses and hosting, um, you know, OERs themselves. And one thing I would just, you know, add on to what Laurie has said is that um, you really see the kind of the power of building openly at CUNY in those examples that, not, you know, we have so many different campuses, you know, from graduate and professional schools to senior colleges to community colleges um, located in you know all the five boroughs of, of New York City um, and uh, when you have faculty working with students not just to teach online but to use the course as a way to generate open resources that becomes really powerful because um, and, the, and then the commons as the, as the content accretes over time as more and more people build openly, uh, we we've, we've really been able to develop a feeling and a sense of community in the space, which is why we've been able to keep the project going for for so long. So, um, Manifold is another um, fantastic project um, that we have um, at CUNY, where we provide a digital publishing platform for anyone within the CUNY community. Um, to build OER, um, to use it as a way to um, bring public domain text into the classroom, um, which helps students by bringing textbook costs down to nothing as part of our zero textbook cost um, initiative within CUNY. Um, We've had a lot of amazing projects that have come out, um, especially over the, the past year and with the pandemic, as um, instructors have kind of struggled with student engagement and working everything over Zoom. But we've had just some, some really great things that have been happening um, on the Manifold platform from this one great books um, that has been done at Queensborough Community College, um, which is a brand new project. Um, fabulous bringing in public domain text that can be used across the CUNY system. Um, we also have had a lot of uh, coursework projects um, that are put on to Manifold. So we have instructors that working with their students, building content that is you now openly available um, for anyone to read and to use within their courses or just to enjoy um, themselves if they'd like to read it. Um, there's a few of these here. You can see I wake up counting. Um, this is the, a guide for teaching and learning in the humanities and social sciences. Um, part of the Haystack group produced this um, along at, with the Graduate Center and the Futures Initiative. Um, I, one of the things about Manifold, I'll say, because I got to see it in, a, in another um, talk that you can see here at Domains 21, but the fact points to, Robin, the way in which you all have built another infrastructural piece to build community around particular texts. And it's the idea of the text as the building block of community. Whereas Laura, you did a brilliant job showing the whole idea of, you know, what we've known the, the CUNY Commons for is websites as a space that is open educational resources. I mean, that's been the case since the mid nineties. And like you're balancing these by not just saying, oh, websites are die, but introducing new applications as well and have a diversified infrastructure for your community to use is a really like unique. And I think part of that uniqueness, Matt, you kind of alluded to earlier was saying that you guys have been playing the long game, you know? And I mean that like this has been going on at CUNY for a long time. 
And that is starting to pay off in some powerful ways as we're starting to say, and I, Matt, maybe that's a point of contention. So I'll let you all talk about that. But that's how I'm seeing it from the outside. Is that fair? Well, I mean, I, th I think so many of us are at CUNY and believe in CUNY because of its mission of serving, you know, like the children of the whole people of the city of New York. It's kind of got this idea of openness and equity that is built into the institution or, you know, which is not to say it's not problematic because there are multiple ways in which it's problematic, but, um, you know, in all of its kind of messiness and all of its uh, diversity, CUNY is sort of open in its, in its kind of instantiation um, from, you know, uh, uh, open admissions in the, in the past to um, just this, this mission of serving the entire city. And so, you know, we've been able, luckily, I think in some ways kind of in the margins to, to build out these spaces. Um, and I think it's a credit to, you know, the teams that we have, the people that we have, people like Luke, who really, um, you know, see this as a kind of strategic uh, move to build out this, this infrastructure over time. And the amazing thing at CUNY is that you know, first of all, we prioritize community. Like a lot of our projects begin with a really rich um, and well thought out um, articulation of what community is and how we can connect to people. Um, and then once you start opening these platforms and encouraging students and faculty to use it, I mean, they just, they, there's so much amazing content uh, being created because the, 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 the people, the, the students and the faculty do, do such incredible work here. I'd, I'd like to, to add to that um, by, um, you know, just emphasizing the point of, of community um, that emerges around these platforms. And the, the tagline for the commons, and it has been since it was launched, is what will you build? Um, and um, I think it's really important at this conference and in other spaces for us to, to critically consider the ends that we seek with openness, right? It's great to save students money on textbooks. That's a really um, valuable pursuit, right? It's great to have open access publications and to let knowledge be free. These are positive things. Um, we, but we feel also that a lot is asked of openness. Um, and I'd like to thank one of my students, uh, Joe Thompson, who's an open educational resources librarian at CUNY and an adjunct who wrote a blog post about this just this week in our ITP course um, that I'll that I'll share. So I think it just does a wonderful. Um, a wonderful job of, of of raising this question, right? Because we are very much in um, a, a conflict over the future of the university system. We've been, everyone knows, we've been fighting austerity um, for a generation. Um, and and this team and the work that we do and our, our comrades at the Open Lab, um, at City Tech and at BMCC and in other spaces throughout CUNY, very much see open infrastructure as the space from which we can think and organize our response to proprietary incursions um, on the work that we do in the university. And where, frankly, we can fight for the soul for, of the university and the future of the university. It allows us to exert more influence over the, the labor dynamics um, and the intellectual property dynamics of the work that happens and not to cede those questions to the administrative spaces that are disconnected from the, the core ethos of the university, which, which Matt laid out. So we very much see this open infrastructure as a necessary precondition um, for the work that, that we want to do, right? Openness is a valuable end in and of itself, but openness itself is not going to transform the university. Um, and, and these platforms have allowed us to bring new populations, new disciplines, new learners and thinkers into that conversation um, with us. And it is a long game. It takes a long time for you to build, um, community and for and for that community to develop trust and ways of ways of working, um, and uh, you know I'm just really appreciative of of uh, Matt's leadership uh, on this on the, at the Commons since you know late almost 15 years he's been working on this stuff um, from from the perspective of the Commons, um, and it takes that kind of persistence, commitment, um, and vision to break us out of the semester by semester cycles. Of, uh, of uh, reporting uh, and impact demonstration um, that uh, you know open investments often require um, to justify themselves. And rant. Big fan. Thank you all very Irish much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Om nom nom.